Legend of Total War here, and today we're going to showcase something really interesting that somebody sent in a save file for that is only possible to do using the Jade Court, so that's Yuan Bo's campaign. Now, there's a bunch of things that you have to do in order for this to occur, but you can essentially do this multiple times if you know what you're doing. So, we've got Xiao Ming here with a really good high tier army, but what we've got here is an Astromancer that has essentially no or very low winds of magic costs on most of his spells. And he's also equipped the Jade Amulet, so he's going to get back 2.5 winds of magic every time he casts, even if he casts a spell that doesn't use any winds of magic. And so I'm going to showcase firstly how you go about doing this, and then what the effects are going to be in a relatively small scale battle over here. So, the first thing is that this is a special astromancer. So if we have a look over here, he's got the Emissary of the Celestial Court. This is a like a unique trait that only Yuan Bo can get. Winds of Magic Power Reserve plus 25. Winds of Magic cost minus 25% for all spells. So how we go about getting that is by using the Celestial Emissary, the stone action. So this will summon a character that has that trait. So that means that if you're playing as as Xiao Ming or Miao Ying, you won't be able to spawn these. I don't know if it's possible to confederate Yuan Bo and get that, uh, but you're obviously going to be able to just keep getting more of these throughout your campaign playing as Yuan Bo. So that's that's the first thing then. Now the next thing is the Astromantic Boon. So this is a steel action. Winds of Magic Power Reserve plus 5 per turn. Cooldown minus 25% to all spells. Winds of Magic cost minus 20% for all spells. So if we have a look over here, we can see that Xiao Ming has the Astromantic Boon. And then there is one other ingredient, which is actually very tricky to do. So playing as Yuan Bo, you have to get Yuan Bo's trait, defeat trait. So if we have a look over here, he's got one dragon down. So how did he manage to do this? So what he did is he took Yuan Bo over to Xiao Ming, deliberately lost a battle against him so that he would have his trait, and then once he confederated him, then you've got it. So Xiao Ming is kind of the one lord who can't do this like free winds of magic stuff. So you've got three pretty significant winds of magic cost reductions going on simultaneously, and the only one that needs to be refreshed is we the Astromantic prevail. Boon. And then on top of that, this isn't that big of a deal, but you've also got the Scrolls of Astromancy here, which reduces the Winds of Magic cost by 10% when overcasting spells. And then, of course, the uh, the Jade Amulet there, which essentially gives it life leeching from the Death Magic. So, anyway, we're going to go up against the Volary here, showcase this a bit, see how it goes. Don't have a huge amount of uh, Winds of Magic pool. Let's see what we can do with it. It's an order resolve win. This isn't a disaster battle. We're just showcasing this and see how it actually performs, whether or not this is actually worth doing. Because Heaven Magic's not bad. And you're going to get quite a few spells that are going to be completely free of Winds of Magic. And that being said, it doesn't have to be completely free. It doesn't matter if you're spending a couple of Winds of Magic, like for example, Comet of Cassandora, because you could just alternate your spell casting. Cast a few Comets of Cassandora or Chain Lightnings, and if you need Winds of Magic back, you just cast the the other spells. But obviously sending Xiao Ming to, to lose, not, not to Xiao Ming, um, Yuan Bo to go and lose to lords that you are going to confederate is the only way that you're going to get it absolutely free. And I would say that you probably don't need to go to that extreme amount of effort to do this because even just getting the other two Winds of Magic boons, I suppose, would be sufficient. Like, you'd still get tons of Winds of Magic out of them. So, here's what we're going to do. We're going to use the artillery just to dismantle the walls, uh, the towers specifically. Maybe I'll fight over here. Just be fewer towers to have to destroy. Stay out of their range. So these have a range of 400. Got to be very careful because they've got a range of 350. You can actually use the Astromancer to destroy walls. Just got to be careful. Okay, so these ones here, let's aim at those towers. So that is only one Winds of Magic. So we'll still gain Winds of Magic from doing that because the Jade Amulet activates. 
Now, if we overcast com- My god. Overcasting Comet of Cassandora is actually cheaper than regular casting Comet of Cassandora. The downside, though, is that you've got a chance of miscasting, which at the moment is... There's no chance of miscast. He's got it down to absolutely zero. Let me just see if that's actually true. Yeah, no chance of miscast. What about this? It's still one wins of magic and miscast chance. Yeah, still zero. Oh my god. One wins of... Okay, the cooldown is affecting here. I've had this happen before where you've got zero cooldown on your base casting, but on the overcasting casting, it doesn't it doesn't tell you, but you've still got to wait a little bit. <laughs> I just got to wait for that to, um, to take down. I'll take a little bit. Because, yeah, overcasting doesn't just cost more winds of magic. It also has a longer cooldown. Oh, look at this. Winds of magic regularly, one winds of magic. Overcasted, no winds of magic. Completely free. So that's two winds of magic. Can't overcast that spell. Yeah. Need to wait before I can cast again, but just, just do it anyway. One wins of magic, not that big of a deal. So yeah, with this guy here, you could just annihilate a city garrison as long as they're not firing upon you. Might also be a good idea to give him the Von Karstein Blade if you've got it. Thing is, a lot of these spells are not great at units that aren't pinned down. They're great if they are pinned down, for sure. Chain Lightning being the most notable example of a spell that the AI doesn't try to dodge. But if we look here, if I overcast Comet of Cassandora there, you'll watch, they'll dodge it. Or maybe they won't. No, they're, they're going, no, oh, hang on. They're deciding to dodge it, but they're not doing a very good job of it. <laughs> I will go. There is a way. So yeah, you can see here we still got heaps of winds of magic. Because we're just it's just not costing us anything. Curse of the Midnight Wind only costs one even when overcast and no no miscast chance. I don't think I've ever seen a character that can't miscast, no matter what happens. Of course if you go up against a character like Wurzag or a Cygor, that'll increase your miscast chance, and there, therefore you will probably miscast. Or a, um, a Warrior Priest, or an Arch Lector, because they've got things that increase the, uh, the miscast chance. Another thing is that when using the Jade Amulet, and I tried it to try to generate Winds of Magic, you should try to wait for it to um, finish completing the actual ability before casting another spell. Unless, of course, you've just got so much that it doesn't really matter. Yeah, so we've got maximum Winds of Magic, reser not reserves, but power. And we've still got plenty of reserves available, meaning that I don't think I've actually used up any of our total reserves so far. Because, yeah, this one here generates 2.5 Winds of Magic. Actually, I need to check this, because sometimes... Sometimes it says one Winds of Magic, but it rounds up. But it, So it rounds up when it takes off your Winds of Magic, but it rounds down when it tells you. So when, I need to check that. So you can see... Hang on. Let me just see. So that one is actually win, one Winds of Magic. And this one here is three when not overcasting. And can't cast it again yet. Yeah. Sometimes the game can lie to you, sometimes, about how much a spell actually costs. Interesting. No, don't think we're going to do the whole battle here. Like I said, it's not a disaster, but I'm just here to showcase it. And yeah, he hasn't miscasted once, because it would have taken some damage. And yeah, we're actually gaining Winds of Magic as the fight goes on, because look, our power reserve is going up. A moment ago, it was stuck at 20. And if we just let that go on, pretty much any spell that we cast, except for non-overcasted Combat of Cassandora, we're going to gain Winds of Magic back. 
So basically, always overcast comment of Casandora, which is pretty much the case anyway, because it's really good overcasted. I mean, it's cheaper than the regular one. So this is... This is really cheesy. This is true unlimited Winds of Magic, where you can just keep casting over and over again. Like, there are a couple of characters in this game that have unlimited Winds of Magic without cheesing it. For example, Techless. But in order to get Winds of Magic back, you have to keep using your Swords ability, which takes time to recharge. So, this guy here will cast more spells than Techless over the course of a battle, and he'll cast them quicker. But yeah, you can only get it with a Astromancer, so you're not going to get it with Metal Magic. It might have actually been better with Metal Magic because you've got a more versatile roster of uh, spells, especially when dealing with single entities. Heaven's Wizards are basically useless at dealing with single entities, but the, the Metal Magic, you can use the uh, Final Transmutation. That being said, we could always just use some Winds of Magic from this one and then just recharge using him. Basically what you could do is just overcast Wind Blast upgraded. Yes, it's actually not using up any Winds of Magic. Just cast it. Okay, if you cast something that doesn't cost Winds of Magic, it doesn't trigger the Jade Amulet. So you have to cast at least one Winds of Magic to get it. Right. So you can't just get freebies. I mean, it still is a freebie. You spend one and get two, uh, essentially gain 1.5 in return. But yeah, if you want to deal with single entities, you're best off using... Oh, I left you all the way over there. Yeah, you're best off using Final Transmutation. Anyway, we're not going to fight this whole battle here. I just wanted to uh, to showcase it. He doesn't need to save far back. But that's really interesting there. And that's that was a good find because the first two, you know, getting getting one of these guys with the traits and also the um the other steel and stone ability, those are just in your um in your natural faction mechanic. But then getting a character that has essentially defeated your legendary lord, that was a clever thing to do. And it reminds me a bit of the uh, Bretonian campaigns that I used to run with the Fae Enchantress. So what I would do, because Bretonia used to have really bad um, casualty replenishment, I would deliberately lose with the Fae Enchantress to lords I was about to confederate so that they would get extra replenishment rate because she was the only one that had a replenishment rate trait. But in Warhammer 3, there's now multiple lords that provide replenishment rate trait and damsels now provide uh, replenishment, so you don't need to do that anymore. But yeah, that's that's really good. That's, a, that's some good cheese. It's not too much effort, I suppose, to do it. The, the biggest problem is just getting Yuan Bo to lose. The best thing to do, I think, is just have it done to Legendary Lords, because if you do it to generic characters, um, there's no guarantee that that AI faction isn't just going to go and immediately get that one killed. But, you know, if you can manage it, then great. But yeah, that's really impressive. Anyway, guys, that's the end of this one. I just wanted to showcase that to you. Just do a quick summary of how to do this. So the first two things, the easy things... Okay, Celestial Emissary, that'll summon the the special uh, Astromancer. Then you want to put down Astromantic Boon. That'll last, I think, five turns. In the later stages of the campaign, getting heaps of these tokens is really quite easy because you'll be fighting lots more battles. And then the third thing you need to do is get Yuan Bo to lose to the character that's going to command this guy. So Yuan Bo shouldn't be the one commanding it. I guess if you put this guy in Yuan Bo's, uh, army. He'll just cost some winds of magic to do it. And then to add extra effect, obviously, you want the Jade Amulet and the, uh, the Scrolls of Astromancy to make them even better. Anyway, that's really good. Appreciate this being sent in. Appreciate you guys. That's in this one, and we'll see you next time. Later, guys. An unspeakable catastrophe.